West Texas is a big, big place with little old ranch houses, beautiful sunsets, good guides, and some awesome wild sheep hunting opportunities. These are the sheep that we shot with High West Outfitters in the past uh, several days of hunting. We're going to talk a little bit about hunting methods and field judging methods in trying to find an old ram. So I'm going to come around and jump in the picture here. Thanks for tuning in folks. We got some really, really cool rams here. Most of them are pretty old. What would you say? Eight plus for all of these sheep? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And uh, right here, there's a deadhead that one of you guys picked up. That's kind of a classic example of a really, really old sheep. Very possibly just died of old age. Very possible, yes, sir. Talk me through what it is on this ram's horns that tell you how old he is. There's, you want to take it? Guys? No, go ahead. Go ahead. There are <laughs> multiple things that you know are indicator of age. Um, the smoothness on his horns. Um, if you look towards the end here, you can kind of see where it's starting to wear through into the horn core. Um, that's definitely an indicator of, of some age. It takes a lot of time of wearing and digging to do yeah. that. Um, some people believe, you know, that the you age them like you do big horn. Yep. I'm not sure. I don't know. But if you do, this one, he's got a pile of rings stacked in there. Um, I don't know if how true that is if it is the same as a big horn But sometimes you can see me easier on the backside because of a lack of wear. Yes, sir. Yep. So but Ed, Those three things right there. Are what tells me that sheep is definitely an older ram Yeah on top of the brooming and the brooming yeah. right there They don't do quite like a Rocky Mountain big horn or a doll sheep will where they actually knock it back kind of blunt, but they polish it so much that it becomes almost blunt, right? Right. Correct. They're not brooming like a bighorn to help with their vision. It's not, it, it, they're not intentionally doing it like a bighorn. Yeah. Uh -oh. Moose going. Bombs away. Um, they're not intentionally doing it. They're just digging. Okay. And <laughs> from that constant digging and dusting, um, they're laying in that dirt and then it's all rock out here. So it's, it is just wear is what it is it's mm -hmm. not intentional brooming and you sure. can see this sheep he's starting to broom quite a bit as well yeah this is a good old ram here now age rings and even some of these other features are pretty hard to see on the hoof you guys were talking to me about looking for body distinguishing characteristics while we hunted like the face of the, the shape of their face scarring mm -hmm. bulk Talk us through some of that. What what do you see when you're just looking at a glance, trying to determine if a ram or a group of rams is the right age class? Um, first thing, I mean, if it's a group of rams, first thing I'll do, my eye will catch is I'll go to the the darker colored mm -hmm. sheep. Typically, your older rams are going to have a little bit of a, a little bit more darker color okay. than the rest. Um, and then I will look at their chaps. Um, which is all the hair all hanging the hair, off? Yes, almost um, a, an underside mane off their yes, chest. Yes, sir. Correct. And your your older rams are gonna have typically a, a thick goatee or beard, and then okay. it goes into longer hair, and then it'll go into the hair that's on their legs. You know, and it'll look like all one big flowing mane or set of shafts. Where your younger rams, you can see their leg hair separate from their from their mm. neck they don't have much of a goatee um so that's just a couple things that i look at and there's several more um big blocky face mm -hmm. blocky okay. head um do they go sway backed and pot bellied like some yeah they will animals will they will it just depends also you know on what time of year it is and how much they're eating and stuff like that but typically they're gonna have that swayed back that big old shoulder front look big hump yeah. in the front um and then you know, a lot of your young rams, uh, these all dad have a, a black line kind of going down their neck and across mm -hmm. all the way to kind of the mid body. Your sure. young, young rams will not have that. Okay. Your mature rams will have that and they'll also have kind of like little tufts of hair that get, drop right at the back of their jaw and that's usually also a good indicator of age. Okay. Those black tufts of hair. Now how about just looking for horn size? 
I mean, obviously your biggest, oldest rams are usually going to have the longest, heaviest horns. But when you're just looking at horns, let's say you've got a couple or three old rams in a group. What are things that you look for right off the bat to try and determine mass and horn length? I don't have an actual indicator, you know, so much distance between, you know, that he drops below his ear, he's going to be this size. I don't, it's just, after looking at thousands of them a year, you know, you kind of get a feel for it more yeah. than anything. Uh, first thing we're looking for though is age. Yeah. That's the first thing we look for over size and length is age on the sheep. And then, okay, we got three or four rams that are all mature rams and then you start looking at which is the bigger of the three or four sure um, but i don't have any indicators personally that would help me determine the length of a sheep you know just outside of experience and looking and, and, yeah. and killing a lot of them yeah you same know? for you yeah i would say it's same it's very difficult to judge all dad you know they're like antelope, you can have three standing right next to each other, and they look completely different from each other horn-wise, and they're all mm -hmm. going to be half an inch to an inch off of each yeah. other. And it's very similar with all dead. One thing, though, I will say is if they if they have mass and they carry it out three quarters, half to three quarters of the way, that is a general good indicator of of a solid ram. Sure. You know, um, but as far as it is it looking at a ram and being like oh yeah that i can tell you right now if you look for this indicator it's taken me five years to get where i'm at now looking at sheep almost every week for nine yeah. months out of the year it's it can be very difficult you can look at where horns go on the shoulder and stuff but i'll tell you this much if if they go and they start going horizontal to the ground their horns at their tips they're probably going to be close to 30 if not bigger mm, okay one cool. thing, that's what that is one thing i do yeah typically see so, folks, the takeaway probably is trust your guides first. <laughs> and if you're trying to be a good hunter, help glass and help find the animals, and you're trying to learn to age them and judge them yourself, which it behooves every one of us to do, you know, first look for the body size, look for signs of age. And any of you that have studied, uh, say, aging whitetails, a lot of people have learned how to age a whitetail deer or a mule deer, even elk and so forth on the hoof. You know, there are different species, but a lot of those same concepts can still be applied. And then what I like is it seems like a lot of times you'll find them in at least pairs or groups. You know, I shot my ram out of a group of four. You study them all, and assuming they're all old enough, you just pick the one that either looks the biggest and or has the look you like best. Because some of them are wide, some of them are narrowed and droopy or whatever. Mm -hmm. Find one you really like the look of, and if he's old enough, go ahead and take him. What about, before we wrap up real quick, just some glassing and finding tips for folks that have never been out in this broken desert country and looked for an odd dad. Where are those little spots you look for? And you know what do they look like through glass that helps them jump out to you? For me, when I pull up to a spot, I look what I would call the most obvious spots first, mm -hmm. which are typically around your rock piles or towards the top of the ridges. Um, and then color they they do have their own color even though they're tan like everything mm -hmm. else in this country there's a slight bit of red to them their mane is a lot more blonde than the rest of their body so you get the contrast there and then the shape of their horns because if you think about it there's nothing else in nature mm -hmm. you know for the most part that has that shape out in this desert yeah you know what i mean so as i'm scanning whether it be for bedded sheep, standing sheep, sometimes you'll get the, the sun shining on their horns and their, their horns will stand out, but the shape of their horns give it away a lot to me. And even when they're on the skyline, just scanning across and you see that, that perfect arch, you know, it's like, oh, there's a sheep. Sure. You know? So th that's just a couple things that I look for. Yeah. And where I start glassing. And often a big group, like you'll see of nannies and kids, and you know, if you're hunting the rut, a ram's going to be in there with them, but those are easy to find. They seem to just flow up the mountainside. It's a splash of color and movement, yeah. right? And typically, yeah. there, there's a good sized group, so you know, numbers are always, giving yeah. them, they'll give themselves away with just pure volume. Sure. <coughs> Finding the lone rams or the, you know, the twos, threes, and fours of those big old rams during the not rut period is a little harder, but they still do tend to stick out a lot more than say a coos deer or even a desert mule deer, oh, at least in my experience. So they're not absolutely super hard to see. 
what's hard i think folks sometimes for people that have never hunted them is looking where they want to be because most folks wouldn't think that a, a you know any kind of wildlife would want to be up there subsisting on what's there it's rocks and little pieces of bunch grass and cactus <laughs> I love it. I think there's nothing cooler than going up into this big spectacular country in search of a, a gnarly old sheep like this. They're just awesome to hunt. Last tip, I'd like to get both of your thoughts on it real quick. Let's start with you, Josh. What about glass? What kind of binoculars do you recommend for folks? Man, Swarovski's are great, and Leica's is what I personally use. But Swarovski is great glass. You can't, you can't, okay. You can't. So beat premium that. glass. What premium about glass. size? size uh you know 10 by 42s is what i've used mm -hmm. um that's the only thing i've ever used i had some vortex when i first started guiding that were like 10 by 50s yep um, but i've always used 10 by 42s um, and as far as spot and scopes go um you know we all use btx's from swarovski um, that's, that's the dual eye the dual eye piece with the 95 millimeter. yeah um that i believe out here it's the best for glassing you know because we're glassing most of the day yeah you know we're driving and glassing and so that glass right there is, is top notch you can't you can't find anything better than that on the market right now cool how about you what do you think i'm kind of in the same boat as josh i personally run the swaro um, new 12 power nls uh -huh, the um, nl pures yes sir okay um and i run a btx as well the combo mm -hmm. of the two does everything we need it um, to do but not everybody has the means to go buy yeah. you know that type of glass we do it for a living so it's kind of necessary for sure. us mm -hmm. so i my recommendation would be buy the best that somebody can afford or yeah. you know and there's a lot of good optic companies out there yeah you know that's just what we use we look through them so much that eye fatigue is a big thing for me and the swaro glass just prevents the eye fatigue yeah mm -hmm. so that's that makes that's good sense so folks probably a 10 power maybe a 12 if you're good at holding them steady by hand and you're not using them for hunting close thick timber with a, a <coughs> decent size objective lens so you're going to gather enough light and by quality, whatever you can afford, try and stretch that just a little bit further. You won't regret it when you're spending hours behind it. Mm -hmm. We're losing light, guys, so we're going to have to wrap up. But Josh, yes, Steve, I really appreciate Absolutely. you guys. It's yes, been sir. great hunting here with High West Outfitters. This has been a fantastic hunt. We've taken a bunch of rams that are all in that 29 to 32 inch range. Good old rams and great hunts. So yes, sir. Thanks for, for the opportunity to be here and hunt with you guys. Yes, oh, sir. we enjoy thanks having you having guys us. out. Federal is actually a really good host. They they've yeah. had you out several times with us. You know they're really good, not just customers but good friends of ours, and make good product. And so we we enjoy having you, and hopefully, uh, I imagine we'll see you again with these guys. Boy, I sure hope so. Yeah, and <laughs> and it's it's been fun to watch the effectiveness of the the terminal ascent bullet on these animals huh? i stand by that bullet yeah. I, do too. I, I will stand by that bullet and that's that's not even a plug for federal <laughs> that's just, that's just you know it works from yes it, it yeah. works and from experience and we harvest a lot of animals every year through this outfit and it, it has not failed us so yeah mm -hmm. Outstanding. I, I'm a believer. Yes, well, thanks again, guys. I'm Joseph Von Benedict coming at you from the middle of nowhere, Texas. We'll see you in the country. <laughs>